In today's video, we're going to be making a giant crayon. With in-person schooling around the country closed down, we're partnered with our friends from IPVO to bring you Teacher Tuesday, where we will shout out some of those educators who are going above and beyond for their students. Today's teacher is Shelby Winder from Spring, Texas. We reached out to Shelby and asked her to share a little bit about herself, why she loves teaching, and how this year has been going. And here's what she had to say. Hey everybody, come on in. Welcome to our classroom. My name is Shelby Winder and I am a Fighting Texas Aggie graduate, class of 2017. Woo! I am going into my third year teaching. For the first two years, I was a high school special education life skills, as we call it, math and science teacher. This year, I wanted to change it up a little bit and I am teaching sixth grade English language arts here in Spring, Texas. You may be wondering, why do I love teaching so much? Let me tell you, every day I get to teach content in a fun and exciting and engaging way. Not only that, it is such an honor to be a piece of the puzzle in preparing my sixth graders for life after sixth grade. Teaching is what I was born to do. Shelby has been doing amazing things with her students, so we want to help her out. We'll be sending her an IPVO Do Cam to help with remote teaching. The IPVO Do Cam is a portable camera that can quickly plug into any computer and share what's happening on your desk. When you're done showing what's on your desk, you can also flip the camera and instantly turn it into a webcam. The camera is an 8 megapixel camera that uses a Sony CMOS image sensor, so the image is a high quality with quick autofocus. The camera stand is also extremely flexible, so it's easy to adjust the camera and get the angle you need. IPVO also released the Creators Edition of the Do Cam, which comes in a vibrant yellow color. So Shelby, keep an eye out in the mail as we're sending one your way. Big thank you to all of the teachers out there, and if you'd like to get an IPVO camera for yourself or a teacher you know, go ahead and click the link in the description below. Welcome back. Today we have <laughs> 5,000. Crayons. There are a lot of crayons on this table. I want to give a huge thank you to our friends at Crayola for hooking us up with all of these fantastic crayons. We have 5,000 crayons. It's over over 5,000 crayons. <laughs> Literally insane. As you can like, see, some of them are already unwrapped just to make our lives a little bit easier. We got a little bit of a jump start on it this weekend, sorting them out to see how this process was going to go. So what are we doing with all these crayons, Grace? We are making a giant crayon the size of me. So we're making a gray size crayon. A gray size crayon. Here's the basic idea. We have 5,000 crayons that we're going to take the wrappers out of and sort into 24 different piles, then compile them into a crayon mold that we have created, and then make a gigantic five foot four crayon. So we do have a process for how we're going to sort all these out. We thought about just taking the blues, the purples, and the pinks, the yellows and the greens, and putting them into just separate categories. But then we were like, well, that's not following Crayola's colors. We're making our own colors at that point. Very true. So we decided to sort them out into 24 different piles, take the wrappers off, and then we are going to make layers all the way up this tube. There are over 5,000 crayons we have to unwrap. <laughs> I'm so excited. Aren't you excited to unwrap things? Yay. It's going to be fantastic. Let's get to it. All right, so we're going to make a little bit of room to put in our mason jars. Obviously, oh. these mason jars are not big enough, so we're going to like fill them up to separate them, put labels on each one, and then put them into separate compartments. So what was tricky about sorting out the crayons and putting them in rainbow order is we couldn't do them by scribble color. We had to do them by their wax color because we are melting them down and remelting them. So the Blutiful, for example, which is this very, very dark I think one. It's this one? Nope, it's right here. Oh. It's very, very dark. If when we were putting this one in the middle with the other blues, it was creating kind of this divide, if you will. So if we wanted to group the blues together, they all look pretty good. And then you got this, this one that like sticks out and looks a whole lot closer to black. So we decided that it would probably be best for it to put blue to full on the end with the black because it would just make our process a little bit easier and make our rainbow not choppy. <laughs> So we just spent the last hour and 30 minutes filling these to max capacity. Obviously these aren't all the way full, but these little jars 
absolutely are. <laughs> no, I can tell the difference between all of these now. Like yes. without looking at the name, I can see the slight differences between red, orange, yellow, orange, orange, the Scarlet. blue violet, the violet, it is mm -hmm. all very, very evident. <laughs> yeah. So we are going to take these and dump them mm -hmm. into our baggies that we have pre-made from our pre-sort this weekend. And then we are going to proceed by cutting them open after we finish that little pile right there. That's so all we got left. We're almost there. We're on the home stretch. We have peeled 230 plus boxes of crayons. That's 5,000 plus crayons. I have to give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to the whole TKOR team. This yes. was a team effort, y'all. I mean, full on blown team effort, crowded around the bench, peeling <laughs> and getting the shells off of these crayons, which was no hours. easy task. Hours. It was hours and hours. Good team bonding, but thank you to the whole team for helping this process happen. Success. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take our tube and we're going to hot glue it to this piece. This is going to be the butt of our crayon. Once we get the butt of our crayon on, we're gonna go ahead and mash up some of these crayons. We're gonna put them in this bowl because when you mash up your crayons, you're increasing their surface area, you're increasing their melting consistency. And so once we melt them in this bowl, we're going to then pour them through this funnel and then it is going to pour in and we'll have our first layer done. And then we get to do it 23 more times. All right, All right, we got our first one. This is just in case it spills a bit. Do you want me to rotate it? I think we're good. You sure you're good? Yeah. It's coming in. Oop, we are spilling a little bit. You're gonna Hold have to strip this really quick. So if it's uh, supposed to be a 64 inch tall crayon and we've got 24 different layers, they should each be two and two thirds inches. Our tube is slightly smaller than Just slightly. the actual tube. They don't sell the exact diameter we need. So we've got a five inch diameter here. So I'm gonna bring this down here. It should be about right here. You can see we actually could go another quarter of an inch. Do you want some more? Yeah. Tell me when. Probably there. We're at two and three quarter inches. Cool. All right. So I originally had the idea that we needed to use the small tube to feed it in through the bottom. Kevin did not think that was a good idea. Kevin? I didn't know. I didn't say it wasn't a good idea. I asked the question, is it gonna be so viscous that we lose a lot of our crayon in here as it goes down? From our uh, first pour, we definitely won't. Also, we have liquid nitrogen helping our process here because we have such a large quantity of crayon in here that is freezing currently. And the problem we're running into is that we are pouring something from five feet up, so we have to account for that fall velocity. So as it's falling, it's picking up speed, hitting this causing a splatter. So we had to make sure that first level was solid enough that if we drop hot crayon down, that it's gonna stay. I think we're there with the black. It sat out for a little bit. It's not nearly as hot as this beautiful was and now we're gonna tackle it. Something we did talk about is when we are done with this crayon, we're gonna go ahead to clean it all up is just shave as much as we need to down just so we have those beautiful layers and those beautiful colors. Because you know what? You mess up, you learn from it, and you redo it or try again. In our case, we're not redoing this because I'm not peeling 250 more boxes, boxes of crayons just to get the color beautiful out. Kevin didn't believe in my skills here when I pulled him out and started taping. You can do anything with duct tape. I just thought we could probably come up with a better way to cool it than just duct taping freezies around the top. I call these freezies. A lot of people call them otter pops, I guess is the real name, but they're freezies. Anyways, Either way, it looks good. It's I cold. I nailed this. I'm hype. It's fantastic. The problem we were running into when we were looking at this was it is starting to separate the plastic container and the wax. It's, my shoes are up here, sorry. <laughs> um, was starting to separate and so we didn't want to get a large drip down the side. 
I have tried to strategically let our last layer cool down significantly. So when we pour it, it's gonna be thicker, it's gonna set quicker, and we're not gonna have that residue down the side. Yeah. As we cool the wax, it contracts. So Especially it's getting a little right bit here. smaller. That's what happened right here with this layer. And the yellow came into the yellow green right but on the side. But it's okay. We're gonna make it all beautiful and fix it in. Green yellow. It'll be spectacular. Ooh, a little bit coming, a little, there we go. Beautiful, and we're just lifting it up a little bit as we go too. Great, great, great. Oh, that's a smooth pour. Yeah. That looks pretty. I think we can call it there. Yes. It is a little bit lopsided, so we can see there's a little bit of surface tension holding it above the pipe on this side. Plus, we're gonna hold on to this because what we're seeing is that the center is concaving a little bit. And if you look at a normal crayon, you can actually see that the center does concave a little bit in a small scale. So in the large scale, we're seeing a lot of that concave. So we're gonna save some of this stuff and then we're gonna fill it accordingly and as needed. To cool this crayon, we had to get pretty innovative. So we put our minds together and we actually we used a water pump and another tube on top of this to pump cold ice water into a surrounding tube and have it slowly leak out of the bottom. It works. It works, it that's works. all I gotta say. <laughs> we go up. Oh, smooth sailing. Yep. Yeah. Wow, this looks great. Yes. <sighs> Yeah. This is like where our learning process really began. Was This is when we really got it. Mm -hmm. You guys! Oh my! <laughs> it's done! It is in one piece after falling apart a couple times. It is taller than Grace. It is. It is like half an inch taller than Grace. Maybe a full inch if we push her hair down. We officially have a Grace size crayon! <laughs> but we're not done. We are not, we have to get the Crayola labels on it. But this was a labor of love. If you look at the studio floor, um, you're going to see remnants of this crayon potentially forever. We have officially left our mark on the TKOR studio. So as we melted everything, so let's start down low, Grace. Let's talk about this. So these layers look bad. Special. You can see there's like cracks, cavitation, multiple different splatters. colors. Especially these two are apricot melted into our brown because so it was just too hot. Here, this we started to learn. Yes, well this brown was an issue in itself because it cooled the fastest out of any of these other colors. As we I were, mean, it set up. As we were pouring down the tube, like yeah. it was already solidifying in that the pouring tube and it clogged the funnel like three times. And then the apricot just did not like the brown. Like we really melted this and it was so hot it remelted the brown and mm -hmm. just like mixed all together. It was just special. And then Mark came in <laughs> and he saved the rest of this crayon. We put um, it in a tub. <laughs> <laughs> we put it in a tub and then we cooled it with ice and then we used the method that we used with the distillation machine where we had that hot center and then we pumped in cool water so we had a tube around a tube. Yep. So this is like the perfect visual learning curve you could see. It's like, <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Oh, 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 you, oh, 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 you got ooh, it, you got ooh, it. Oh. oh, you got it. <laughs> All right, let's get this label on and call it a day. And yeah, so I love the Cricut machine and it's super easy. So all we did was we had a vector file, we put it into the Cricut and it cut it for us. What's nice is I use masking tape and what that does is it allows you to create a nice pull and seal so you can see exactly what's going on your crayon. And it also pulls away very easily from the vinyl itself. That looks straight to me. Yeah, so we did invert it to white instead of black so it would really pop on the colors because if it was black and down towards the bottom, it's just totally gonna blend in. That's teamwork right there. Mm-hmm. Voila! It's done! Your TKOR Crayon. So it says TKOR instead of Crayola with TKOR.TV. 
And then our color is called random. random. <laughs> because it's all the colors and because we are quite random around here. So it says random in English and then Spanish and then French. Those are the same languages that are on the crayon. You got the scale here. Wow, 39.6. Still awesome. But this is the cleanest crayon on the internet that we found constructed Giant. that is multiple colors. We did it. Saw it here first, folks. Yeah. A multicolored, gigantic, five foot four crayon. If there is anything you want us to do that involves crayons and unwrapping crayons, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to see it, but let us know what you think of our crayon. We think it's super dope. And as always, stay cool. Hey friends, if you like this kind of content, make sure you hit subscribe right down there in that corner. That way you never miss out on another giant project just like this one. We'll see you then. I probably deserve that after making him unwrap all those crayons.